when the news breaks, we'll be there with bulletins on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. Wake up to the headlines with Headliners every morning at 5am. We treat you to the day's biggest stories before anyone else, seven days a week. You can catch up on everything you need to know before you've even had your kippers. Mmm. Headliners every morning at 5am, only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's News Channel. GB News, unlike other broadcasters, isn't obsessed with the London Westminster bubble. We think there's a nation beyond the M25, and that's why we talk about the issues that matter across the land. Join me on State of the Nation, 8 to 9 o'clock, Monday to Thursday, on GB News. Daisy's listening, and you should too. again. Hello? 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 Who is it? We're here for the show. What show? Uh, we're filming a television show. This is a medieval castle, you silly man. It's for besieging and salt fighting. It's not for some so-called television program. But we made arrangements. <laughs> a strange person. I am both of you. Your, your auntie soiled her nickels, and your mother was a vacuum cleaner. Huh? Let us in. I spit on your gonads, you quarter-witted son of a cabbage hunter. <laughs> Is there someone else up there that I can speak to? Go boil your bottom. <sighs> can you throw him off the ramparts, please? All right. I thought we were getting Hugh Laurie. Second best. Oh, well, Stephen, um... Fry! Stephen, it is lovely to have you here, you silly man. It's lovely to be had here, if I may I say. I want to know about cricket, because you've just become president of the MCC, and he has just shown me this tie. Show the tie. Yes, it's And he an claims MCC it's an MCC tie. Can you tie. zoom in to that little symbol there? It's the uh, device that says MCC, Marylebone Cricket Club. Isn't that Or 1,200 in Roman numerals. Yes, I mean, but you I have know. to be a member to to get that. Right? Yes, yeah. you buy it from the members' shop, at Lords. So tell me about cricket because it's all changing, and it's a beautiful, beautiful game. It's the, still the only game that is very like the one I used to watch mm. in Western Super there in Clarence Park in 1948. Yeah. Well, that's because we're guardians of the law, the laws of cricket, the MCC. Other games have rules. Cricket has laws, <laughs> but each tournament will have its regulations, yes. like where the fielders can be, how far oh, from the yeah, bat, yeah. so on. But there are laws of cricket, which are the same in, in, in on a beach in West Indies yeah. or, or in a slum in Mumbai with stickball or in a village in England uh, or in Western Supermare. Uh, those are the laws of cricket. Uh, I mean, yes, it, it is the same game, but it's, it's like a lot of British institutions. It's... Uh, 
It sent its footprint abroad, footprint abroad yes, and has yes. been reinterpreted and often improved upon, or at least enhanced See, so in different ways. I was ways. very proud the other day when Afghanistan beat Sri Lanka. Mm. Oh, yes. I thought, isn't it incredible the, the reach that this it's, game And it's getting had. wider and wider. Yeah. It's, it's the second most popular sport in the world. Uh, by quite a long way. Obviously, well, one is football so is the football. first, yeah. Um, and a lot of that is to do with the uh, fact that it's so... Well, it's the third religion in India. Uh, yes. They call it the third religion. Yeah. Absolutely crazy about it. And obviously, India is about to overtake China as, as the country with the largest population in the world, so that kind of skews the statistics a bit. But it's the most popular sport in Nepal. Um, Nepal. Uh, and I'm a patron of the MCC Foundation, and our aim is to spread cricket around the world as much as possible. Are you uh, going to get into South America? Yes, that is yes. Our, yeah, that's our next thing. It's, it's not really there. <laughs> I mean, there's a bit in Guyana, of course. We oh, had yes. Mark Ramprakash and others and, uh, and, 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 and who have, you know, sort of uh, uh, our ancestors from there. And Guyana provides the West Indies with cricketers. Yes, it's Caribbean. true, true. Uh, but, yeah, we want to, if you can find a flat bit. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but it's... Um, yeah, Rwanda, Kenya... Um, recently, the foundation went to the Lebanon and uh, taught Syrian refugees who are penned up in camps with nothing to do at all, uh, but turned to kind of crime and misery and upset. And to teach the girls and boys in particular is fantastic because yeah. a, a lot of these countries are countries in which girls have low expectations yes, of their lives yes. um, as far as education, property rights and so on are concerned. And if you can get girls and boys playing cricket together, <sighs> it's absolutely wonderful. What, there comes an age when they'll separate out into a girl's boy and a, yeah. and, and, and a boy's team. But when they're young, it helps the boys respect and like how the it's girls. spreading into the Middle East, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. And I suppose we can also talk of the terrorism of the Middle East, we're, we're speaking on a day, uh, who knows what's going to happen when this actually is broadcast, but we're speaking on a day when they announced this, to me, diabolical news about golf, which is a game I love oh, as well, yeah. and the Saudi Arabian uh, influence in it. Um, <sighs> it's and, all money, Stephen, yeah. isn't So, it? because this is a free speech haven, I can yeah. talk about the behind this uh, yes. with 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 because this is oh, it's the only the strongest words will do sometimes the hypocrisy i know a worse one but i will tell you what <laughs> well, i'd love to hear it no, um, i'll write it on i've got it out of my paper. system now that's the main thing but no it does upset me and uh, you know uh, and um the the history of what saudi arabia has done in the last five or six years and now to be I know it's a, a cliché word, but sports washing is essentially yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, and the chances are, by the time you're watching this, that Lionel Messi will be playing for Saudi Arabia as well as Cristiano Ronaldo and others. Um, it's amazing what money will do, it, isn't it? Is, I mean, when you think that London was the number one centre for the laundering of Russian dirty money, yeah. I mean, it didn't make me feel proud. No, they called it Boristan. Of time. <laughs> I didn't know yeah. that. We're none of us uh, entirely wide-eyed and naive about the world. We know that the world, and it has always been the case, that um, money talks and, and that everybody has a price to some extent. Do you know what Napoleon said? No, go on. He said the surprising thing is not that every man has his price. But how low it is. Yes. Yes, I would have said but the same. how low it is. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. I, I've always thought the greatest power a human being can have in negotiations, whether it's as an actor, as in, like in a film, yeah. as minor as that, or in a huge boardroom way, the greatest power you can have is the power to walk away. Yeah. Just to be able to say, oh, no, this yeah. is not for me, and go. But uh, I know some people in business who will say that the first thing you sense when you sit round a table, say about the sale of a company or the, yeah. you know, the it going public, you know, the share offering, is you instantly know the greedy ones, and they're the ones you want to have nothing to do with, who are in it to make money, uh, uh... and it, you know, I am in that sense very naive. In the um, in the early uh, early nineties, late eighties, when I was aware that the internet was going to happen and I became very excited by it. And through the 90s, I became very excited by it. And we had lots of meetings with people who had ideas and the really good ones wanted to make something extraordinary. 
Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like an artist or a craftsman. Like someone yeah. who just wanted to make a better pair of shoes. Make something good. Make a better yeah. table. Yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. the pleasure, the fun, the fulfilment of it. And then you started to notice, because the internet caught fire, that people were in it to make money. Mm. That the first thing they wanted to do was to build a service or a piece of software that they could immediately sell to, you know, Bill Gates or to mm. somebody else. And, uh, and then it got worse. It got, it got, it got so worse. Much. Yeah, there's a word, and this is, in a sense, what Saudi Arabia is doing with sport. It's the, the darkest word of our era, I think, is the word disruption. It's, um, it sounds simple, it's just the Latin for break. Break, you know, yeah. break down, break up, right. break into pieces to disrupt. Like you interrupt, you break into someone's conversation. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, you get a rupture, it's a break, and so on. So in 2007, when Facebook was beginning to take off, Mark Zuckerberg famously said that the, the, the motto of Facebook is move fast and break things. And this was considered a heroic new stance. These young people were coming in, they were breaking up the way the world was, and, and they were making huge sums of money out of it. They were inventing new ideas and they were sweeping away everything from the past. And so you disrupt the bread and breakfast space yeah. with Airbnb. You disrupt the car hire and taxi services yeah. with Uber. You disrupt, you disrupt, you disrupt. And we're now living in a broken world because things have been disrupted and they've not been replaced with anything like. And they've been disrupted by people who just want to be very, very rich. Yes. And not yeah. to do one thing superbly well. And the betrayal to me, the, the betrayal, the hypocrisy, whatever word is, that somehow we believed in the 90s and early 2000s that these guys in jeans and T-shirts were just kind of, you know, gentle, sweet people who wanted the world to be better. Yeah. And we now know that in Orwell's magnificent image, the pigs are now wearing trousers. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> the, you know, the end of Animal yeah. Farm, they yeah, look through that's and right. they see the pig. Yes, I think and, and it's all come round. And, and you realise these are worse in terms of their fierce, uh, greedy... Um... But can you... Have you ever understood why people want to be so rich? We all want to be able to have a better bottle of wine, or we all want to have a nice car, or maybe a slightly bigger house. But mm. I think the point of being very rich is to be able to tell people that you are very rich. Yes. Essentially. I think it is a display. It's very fashionable these days to look into genetics and ancestry and yeah. to picture our ancestors in a cave or in a field or, you know, hunting and gathering. And we, we know that the, some, some part of being human is acquisition, is territorial acquisition. And whether it's land, building a castle like yeah. this as a display as well as a defence, and money is... a defence as well as display. It protects you from everything in the world, it as does, a castle but the, does. Why such huge sums of it? I don't know. I suppose when you get a huge sum... Are they sum, competitive with yes, each you other? Yes, that's the point I was going to say. Yeah. You join a sort of club in which, uh, you know, people in the suburbs might say, they've got a better lawnmower than I have. I'm, I'm <laughs> yes. going to have to upgrade my lawnmower. Yeah. I'm going to have to upgrade my strimmer uh, and, and all the sort of suburbi things. Keeping up with the Joneses, we call it. It's a very, we've talked about that all our lives. We know it as a yeah. phenomenon. But you scale it up. That's, you simply scale it up. And, and we know this is true. I mean, I can still picture the moment when I was nine and I found an old Macintosh, an old raincoat. People used to wear them. And, yeah, yeah. and it had a ten-shilling note in it. <laughs> and the joy, yeah. the absolute joy. Yeah. Now, what you can't do is scale that joy up. If, no, I, if, right. if I then found £100,000 in a coat, I would be astonished. Yeah. <laughs> and I would go, wow. But I wouldn't be... Um, well, 10 shillings is, you know, half a pound, so I wouldn't be 200,000 times happier yeah. than when I found that £10 note. But people think it's but, more is better, yeah, don't they? Yeah, they do, absolutely. I mean, al al alcoholics think more is better. Yeah, yeah. 
But there are many aspects of humanity where we are bound, if we're honest, to inspect ourselves, to say, I get that, I feel like that. Yeah. But also, I don't feel like that. I've always been very lucky with alcohol, for example. I do like a drink, I like wine, yeah. but I know I could never be an alcoholic. I just don't like it enough. Yeah. I don't like feeling sick. I don't no. like having to cope with the <laughs> responsibility of apologising the next day <laughs> if I've been drunk. I don't like the fact that I might get a bit argumentative. And, and so I just, you know, could never be an alcoholic, but I could be lots of other things that I, yeah. I do recognise faults in. And similarly, with money. I mean, I like having enough money I'll be honest, but to turn said... left on an aeroplane. I think it's yeah. the most... I still get excited by it. I still think, oh, my goodness, <laughs> I'm going first class, and I love it. I mean, I just yeah. love it. And it's a disgrace, and I know I shouldn't, and, and I but try but and do this awful key word carbon offsetting and all that. You used the nonsense. key word, enough. Yeah. Enough, exactly, a sense of enough. So these very rich people have no sense of enough. Yeah. Yeah. Can you... Do you understand it? I mean, it's an illness, isn't it? It is an illness. And I, 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 I wrote a, a sort of autobiography about myself which tried to address my propensity to overdo things myself, but not, uh. not in money terms. But I noticed that from the... I was the same... I was at what we... You know, it's awful. What? Generational wars, you know, you say baby boomer and millennial, yeah. and I just want to throw up when I hear all this... I'm sort of what late a, imperialist. What, what exactly? Yeah. I mean, it just it seems so weird. But anyway, uh, I am a baby boomer in the technical sense. And so I was born in the same year as Sugar Puffs, the cereal. <laughs> right? So <laughs> I, was, I should uh, never forget yeah, that. Yeah, I was of a generation <laughs> for whom television advertising was first directed towards me when uh, I was young to eat Sugar Puffs and Ricicles and Frosties and sugary things. Yeah. And, I, and I went to a school which had a tuck shop, you know, a oh, boarding yeah. school, and there were things like sherbet fountains with sherbet in it, <laughs> like white powder that you, 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 you sucked in through a licorice straw. And, um, <laughs> and they even extraordinarily had Spanish galleon rolling tobacco, which was coconut shreds, but it was done exactly like a rolling tobacco packet that you'd see... <laughs> you'd see grown-ups using, and you would have a pipe made of licorice, uh, uh, and you would have cigarettes with red tips on the end, which were candy cigarettes. And you remember all these sweets. Well, you're probably a generation older, you didn't have quite oh, no, those. there was a talk But they were... So yeah. you were being prepared for cocaine and tobacco. <laughs> Essentially, you were given white powder and tobacco, and I never could eat enough of that, and I would break out of school, school bounds, go to the village shop and buy all the fruit salads and blackjacks and foamy shrimps and uh, little rice paper flying saucers, and I'd stuff myself. In. I couldn't eat them enough. I got, I got teeth missing here because of it. And then when I was a teenager, there was still... So I, I had this empty hole in me, this vast empty hole that said, feed me. I need this sugar. Ah, I need ah. it. And then when it wasn't sugar, it became tobacco. And I ah. smoked. And then in my 20s, it became cocaine. It became yeah. that. I just... And I couldn't sit still without going... <sighs> you know? And, and it's that addictive impulse that many people, many people watching will know what I mean, I, and many people won't. Because this is the important thing to remember. As I said, not everybody has this. And it's a kind of addictive gene. And I guess the money people have it for money. There's this hole in them. They have to acquire yes, and they have to right. own. And own. they don't know how to fill it. No. And no. they think, if I had another 500 million, I'd be happier. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is it. The, one of the things... You, you know a lot about, you know, uh, psychotherapy and things like that. And one of the things that always maddened me yeah. about self-help books and books on there is, is the ones that start off with goal orientation. Oh, set yourself yeah. goals. Yeah. And I think it's the most dangerous and despicable, inimical thing imaginable because... I don't know a human being who, when they reach a goal they've set themselves, isn't dissatisfied. By it. Absolutely, it's always an anticlimax, and you have to. You know, it's a, uh, so many of the Nobel Prize winners get very depressed when they win the Nobel Prize. I can imagine exactly. Yeah, because because what, what do they do next? Yeah, and it, apparently the great chess players always get very depressed off the huge energy. Yes. At, uh, so like, exactly. like these guys here, I can yeah. see. <laughs> there they are. Yeah. They're getting to the end of their game, though, I can see. Yes, one of them's got two queens.
I'm Andrew Doyle, executive producer of The Dinosaur Hour, and Lewis Schaefer with me here. You were the maitre d' in The Dinosaur Hour. No, I was the star of the entire show, and I think people are going to see that when they... Uh, you were, they're going to see we it. cut you out a lot. You, you know, know what? If my mother was still living, she would, like, be furious. She would, but she's she not, would. and I knew that that was okay. No, but I am in, I am in the uh, opening... I hope you don't cut out the opening section. No, you're in the opening section. I'm in the opening but, section. And, of course, working with John Cleese, that must be uh, exciting. Well, that was... That was amazing, really. I didn't appreciate it at the time, but then I'm, I'm sitting there working with him. I'm thinking, this is John Cleese. Yeah. This is John Cleese, as in cheese. He's and you got, got to get that yeah. right. He, he hate in America they yeah. call him Cleese. Yeah. And he really has a problem with that. But you're an American and you're getting it right. Well, my name is Schaefer. People say Schaffer. You just got to get used to it, <laughs> or change your name to something that everybody pronounces. Yeah. Properly. People normally get mine right. Although I was called Andrew Boyle yeah. by a critic once. Maybe an angry. Uh, because that's the, probably the first time that's ever happened to you with yeah. me. My name has been misspelled. I remember one time I noticed my name was spelled correctly at a restaurant, and I was like, it was maybe it was in my 30s, and I was like shocked <laughs> because it never happens. But John, please. John, please. Yeah. I mean, it, it, the great thing about the show was to be able to make the show that he wanted to make, which was talking to the people that he found interesting uh, about the subjects that he found interesting. And that yeah. isn't something that normally uh, is granted by television channels to stars. They normally tell them what they have to do, no. where they have to stand, yeah. all of that. Well, let's just fu let's just hope that people he finds interesting are people we find interesting. Or that the audience finds interesting. That's what I mean, yeah. Well, I found them interesting. No, I found them interesting. Yeah. I have to find them interesting because I'm working with John Cleese. Yes. And as we're spending more time with the dude, I'm realizing, oh my God, this is... Yeah, this is John. Well, Cleese. I mean, because Python was really big in America. It was really big in America, and um, I think it was real. I don't know if it was really big in America. It wasn't really big in America. It was big among college kids. Right. And okay. I was at university, college, university. I was at university at the time, and I remember, I remember we watched all the episodes, and then we're waiting for the next thing to come out, and it, and it wasn't like, it, it was my first association with British television, whereas they don't produce as many episodes as they do in America. So, so you're sitting there waiting. John Cleese has unlimited patience. He does. Yeah. But w with you. Yeah, with me, with everybody. I, I, I don't have limits. I have very, I'm very impatient with you. I don't think you are, no. I think you're trying to do what's best for the show, and I think you just handle it in a, in a, in a bad way. Yeah. He's 83 years old. He knows he knows what to do yes. with people. And a lot of the thing that on screen is him, like, saying, I'm an idiot or stupid or whatever it is. Yes. And, and uh, I, I hope it comes across as being funny. I mean, I did cry afterwards. You did, because but, there was an authenticity to it. Yeah. Which I, I picked up on. But but in, in our private dealings, he was very cordial. It's an odd place to film it, the castle in the middle of Essex it really was the middle yeah. of no, nowhere. I mean, there was nothing anywhere. You know, we, we kept going to that same restaurant because there was only one yeah. restaurant in the village. Um, don't give the people the impression we were eating meals. But it was it was in the middle of nowhere, and I don't know why you chose it. I mean, you could have probably built a set for less money. We probably could. And it would have been closer, and you wouldn't have had to schlep people all the way to but, the middle. Well, Headington not, Castle. It's not very useful for you to tell me this now. Yeah. This is the kind of advice I could have had before the show started. I t listen to me. I try to keep out of your business, Andrew. I'm so happy to be getting a job. My life was at the lowest point. You s you saved me. This is the thing I learned. About. Can I say one thing? You can say whatever you like. Yeah. What actual John please Less is more. I know that's. They say that about all the great actors. Yes. Yes. Whereas your yeah. instinct is to overplay. Yes, because yeah. I'm because I'm an amateur and a failure. You're a drama queen. Yeah. But <laughs> Everything's got to be a drama with you. I'm more of a drama princess. I haven't re reached the queen stage. The Dinosaur Hour, with me, John Cleese, on GB News. Is there any way we could say um, you've got enough now? <laughs> well, it's going to be very interesting because um, we're, f for the past few hundred years, all of us have used to the idea that we fulfil ourselves by by work. Uh, yeah. If we're lucky, it's good work that does fulfil yeah. us. But that's not going to be true for very long. And it isn't something that was true in the past. I mean, work was oh, not no. a normal thing to if do. If you said to an 18th century uh, aristocrat... What, what's well, an aristocrat, certainly, that's true. But you know but what that, I mean? They yeah. would have thought you were mad. Yeah. And I suppose one has to... I'm talking about before the agricultural revolution, which is yeah. not very long ago no, in terms no. of the length of our existence as a species, as a viable species. We could go back in time before the agricultural revolution 
and shag someone from that era and we would have babies. You know, we are yeah, the same right. species. Same right. Yeah. And, and then we didn't work, this idea of work. I mean, uh, the agricultural thing meant we had to s stay in one place and, and suddenly peasants became, you know, subject to the people on horseback and, 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 and class and hierarchy was yeah. established. But, but it's coming again because of uh, artificial intelligence. There will be much less need to, to work. And, and there's always this problem. I'm, I've been, I've been th thinking about artificial intelligence since the 80s because I used to get very excited by this man, Marvin Minsky, who was oh, the, yeah. the, 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 often called the father of AI, and I used to read his essays and books and things. And um, His but, forecasts haven't yes. proved very... No, no, they haven't. Um, uh, but his analysis of what intelligence is and what oh. it might be, I think, was interesting. And one of my heroes... Richard Feynman, who I'm mm. sure you, you, oh, you yeah. know, the great physicist. And um, uh, he, he made a terribly good point about when someone asked him whether uh, artificial intelligence would come and whether m machines would think like us. And he said, no, they won't think like us. They will never think like us. Um, when we make machines, we make them to do things we don't do, not things we already do. So, for example, um, we can run. But when we make a bicycle, we make something that is totally different, that goes a bit faster, actually, but it can't... I mean, a perfect example is a cheetah. That's the fastest land animal. It goes yeah. around 70 miles an hour or something, isn't it? Um, well, we can't begin, and we wouldn't even think of trying to imitate it, make a machine like a cheetah. Yeah. It would be ridiculous. So instead, we invent a wheel and then eventually an engine that can push the wheels, and it's nothing like a cheetah, but it can go faster than a cheetah. Mm. So it's our version. And similarly, with intelligence, we won't try and I imitate human intelligence. We will find, as we are beginning to do, we will find ways of assembling and sorting data all which right. isn't really intelligence, but it produces results that are way beyond us, just yeah. as a car produces results way beyond a, a cheetah. But it's at a different sort of achievement. But it will... I, th I mean, I, I think governments are beginning to get wise to this. Um, uh, the UBI, the, uh, the universal basic income, is, is the thing that uh, we're trying out in this country now, in two regions, in Finland, they've tried it out oh, in the yes. whole country. Yeah. Essentially, the, the money that artificial saves in terms of labour costs, white-collar labour costs as much as blue, um, that, that money goes into giving everybody an income. Yeah. So they don't have to work. And then... How did it work in Finland? I think it worked... Well, Finland is still the happiest country on Earth. Yeah, I So know, it can't yeah. have done too much harm. No. Um, I mean, it, it's, it, it will, like anything, it will change and develop. And, um, but, you know, the cynics say... I, I did a, um, a lecture on uh, AI about seven years ago, Hey on Why, and uh, I, I talked about the possibility of a universal basic income and things like that, and a lot of people asked the question, so... Are you saying that we've all got to become poets and potters and painters yeah. and artists? And I said, well, <laughs> although that would be quite pleasing, it obviously isn't particularly viable. Who's going to buy the, the wretched stuff that we make? But uh, we do have to think about what people will do. We have this sense that there is idleness and that idleness is a terrible thing. But actually, if you read... Bertrand Russell's yeah. famous essay on idols, yeah. which I'm sure you know. Maybe, maybe it's a, a, a very, a very wonderful thing, and will yield it'll enormous be fruit. Wonderfully, wonderfully uh, liberating for everyone. So. Yes. Um, once they get used to the fact that they have to find out what they're interested in. Yeah. When I first went to America, I was fascinated by how important work was. Yeah. And I came back after about a year and a half, and I remember getting on a tube with the Evening Standard, and there was a piece in it by A.J. Eyre, yeah. one of the great philosophers. Yes, the logical and positivist. I can still remember that what he was saying was that the first people who went off to America, New England, were the Puritans. Yeah. And when they sort of sat down and said, well, what, what could we do? He said, well, shall we have a dance? No, we can't do that. <laughs> no theatre. And what, what else could we do? We've played cards. No, that's not allowed. <laughs> so in the end, the only thing they could really do was work. And I still see a very strong Puritan streak in America. Yeah, hugely. Between yeah. good and bad. I mean, I don't like smoking, and I'd rather it didn't. But the savagery with which the non-smokers will persecute the smokers is just 
stupid. Yeah. So what, what would you, is there anything there in that with what were you talking about with work? I mean, in fact, can't we just play cricket or read books? <laughs> <laughs> it would be wonderful. The trouble is, I personally have been poisoned by the work ethic in that I am addicted to it. Uh, I have a, above my desk um, a quotation from Noel Coward, mm -hmm. which is, work is more fun than fun. And I, I've been very lucky to find that so. I, and and I, if but I have a day that off, because I you're doing something that is enjoyable, it really me. enjoyable. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's two, ty three types of work. There's work you hate, yeah. and then there's work you love, and then there's work where you like bits and don't like other bits. And so you try to do as much of the things you like and as little of the things you don't like. But it's all like that. But if you love your work, why would you want to stop? Exactly. If you can presumably, the new problem is, well, what do you what do you count as work? Exactly. What I count as work, other people wouldn't. A lot of people would say, how fabulous that I'm going to retire or how fabulous I'm no longer working. I can garden. I would, yeah. I'd rather eat my own legs than, than, <laughs> than dig and, and fork and uh, be a Monty Don. But he obviously enjoys it and lots yeah. of people do. And they wouldn't like doing the things I do, you know. Writing and things, as you know, writing is agony. I mean, but absolute you, uh, agony. The people and I feel sorry for are the businessmen because they really are motivated by money. Now, when you give them all the money that they could have earned if they worked hard, they're going to be in a terrible <laughs> position. You talk about A.J. Eyre, it's very interesting because in philosophy, he, he and his fellow Vienna school, you yeah, know, the, the scientist yeah. um, types, basically felt that ethics as a branch of philosophy had died. It was no longer particularly interesting. It was <laughs> You'd teach it in universities, yeah. you know, and things, you know. But then technology, bio, biotechnology, as well as um, uh, the, the internet and other things, have meant now that people can leave university with a master's or a doctorate in ethics and they'll get a six-figure opening salary at big corporations because... Ethics is at the heart of the problems that we're talking about. How do you decide what is an ethical artificial intelligence? How do you decide what is an ethical way to lay people off work and to keep so them the happy? So the corporations are studying this really seriously. They're, they're trying to. I mean, there has been a wave of firing in, in, in Silicon uh -huh. Valley lately, and some ethicists have gone. But I remember seeing a, 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 a Berkeley University... You have to say that. We see the pronunciation. Is yes, Berkeley. Uh, uh, and you the, know what a graduate is called. No, Berkeley, <laughs> presumably. <laughs> <laughs> but there, there was a philosophical quarterly from Berkeley magazine, and it just said at the top, "Philosophy, no longer just a stylish route to poverty?" Question <laughs> mark. Uh, suddenly, it was good. becoming the hottest discipline in oh, universities, wonderful. philosophy. Wonderful. And it is exciting because there is so much to think about. And all of us are free do, are to the, do that. Are, are the um, Bill Gates's thinking about it? He does. He, he does is a better, thoughtful man, he? I think, isn't he? Um, but the ones who really uh, spend all this money trying to get into space on their own rockets... Well, the they, they follow a branch of philosophy that is not very academically yeah. fashionable or, or admired, which is objectivism, which is the philosophy of Ayn Rand, uh, you know? Oh, yes. the, the, the sort of libertarian uh, philosophy of yeah. uh, the Fountainhead and Atlas Shrugged, which are more popular now than in her own time. She, Peter Thiel, for example, who's a yes. very powerful investor in all kinds of things, he, he's a great admirer of Ayn Rand. And th There's a new philosophy called long-termism, which sounds rather admirable. We've yeah, always thought yeah. bad thing about politics is so short-term. Yeah. But this is a totally different thing. This regards the future of humanity in... Hundreds, if not thousands of years is the most important thing we can think about. And a, a, a few, well, that's a few pandemics and yeah. uh, 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 diseases and climate change are pinpricks in, in the long history. After all, the Ice Age wiped us, most of us out, but, but it, it, it gave a small cadre of surviving humans the chance to become our ancestors. And, and they think very hard about that. And there's, you know, there's a lot of paranoid fear that that's why, you know, Musk and Bezos and people are wanting to go to Mars. Oh, is, oh, is, 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 is it, they know ahead. the Earth is absolutely doomed. Ahead. <laughs> because <laughs> the, the image I have is we are children playing on the beach, yes. making sandcastles, yeah. with our back to the sea. Yeah. And on the sea, various currents are combining 
They are, for example, bio-augmentation, uh, brain-machine interfacing, which is something Elon Musk is doing, where you interface with a computer and a computer with you, so it reads your thoughts and you can control it with your mind, if you like. Robotics itself, quantum computing, and uh, artificial intelligence of different kinds, um, new materials, nano nanomaterials and so on. Uh, all of these technologies, which are transformative on their own, not to mention genomics and gene editing, um, are like separate swells in the ocean that are combining to make a gigantic tsunami. And as I say, we are playing on the beach, wondering about little things, you know, like this particular strike or whether we, what names we call ourselves, what our identities are, all these tiny little issues that we are obsessed with. So what's with. the tsunami? The tsunami is the combination, the confluence of all these technologies, all changing each other. So uh, you mean life will be transformed in a way we can't begin to guess at? Yes. <laughs> all right, so. let me ask you this question. <laughs> yeah. The, a lot of social media is just awful. Mm. People being unbelievably nasty to people. If you post something on social media, Surely it would be very easy to have an identification on that post which would tell you who'd posted it, mm. which would shame people into posting a lot of the nastiest stuff. Yes. Why don't they do it? Um, well, in the case of Twitter, Elon you know, Musk is, is a libertarian free speech absolutist, he calls himself, and uh, I think he would regard any regulation which enforced something like that, a denial of anonymity and the right to but, anonymity. But, but a denial of anonymity... I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, you're not forcing yeah. it on people. No. What you're saying is if you want to post something, people you have to you tell are. people who you are. I think it's a mixture of uh, genuine sense that they want it to be a free space where people can comment without being well, you got at, for example. Because oh. the problem is, you know, you might... Uh, you might express so you a view say, yeah. in some of the hot button issues of today. You might express a view on gender and something like that, and you will get shit upon on both sides. Doesn't matter which side. Uh, uh, but that's the problem about yeah. expressing a view anyway. Yeah, well, it is. It is. Um, and so anonymity gives a sort of uh, confidence to some, but the confidence to terrible people, as, terrible as we know. Terrible. It's a disaster. And I am a. Of I mean, I, I put things on Twitter as you do. I used to. Yes. You don't anymore? I no, no, I'm back. afraid once Mr Musk got there, I just felt no. Oh, I know. Um, and, and this is why you mustn't believe anything I say about the future, because I believed when in, in 2007, when I joined Twitter and it was just starting, I, I believed that it would melt away boundaries and divisions yeah, and yeah. the old uh, problems and that we would all be brothers and sisters. But the problem <laughs> with technology is there were always good people who would use it for good reasons mm. and then there are rather bad people who will use it for bad reasons. Yes. I, and I, that's true of everything that's ever yeah. been invented. I, I look at the Gutenberg's first printing press. Yeah. And you look at it, that is capable of printing the poems of John Keats or Mein Kampf. <laughs> it doesn't know any different. No. Chung, so there's Mein Kampf. Kachung, there's, every, there's every invention has a good and a bad. Uh, yes, there has no beginning. Everyone's so excited about yeah. it, they only see the positive. That's right. The technology itself has no. I think that the technical term would be no moral valency. Yes, you know. I really enjoyed making the show. Wide variety of different types of people, and the team were all great, and the extras were all great. Yeah. And you got to talk to all of these people. You, you, you developed quite a warm relationship with the nuns, particularly. Uh, you got a few telephone numbers, yeah. From... <laughs> um, and then I, I kissed a nun. Um, you yeah. Did. Well, I, as you know, I'm, a, I'm in the film business myself. I've well, been on many, many... You should explain that to people, that you're not really in the film business. You, you, you are an extra. I am a the... supporting artist. Supporting artist, I'm But sorry, I have had so. relatively large roles in some of these well, films. Well, you had a line in Wonder Woman, didn't you? I had a line what, in Wonder Woman. What was Woman. the line? Uh, we have to see the president, something like you that. You did that very well. I did. I was very, convinced. Did it, you... but people notice it. Whatever yeah. it is, don't belittle yeah. me, Andrew. I'm being sincere. These people don't know. No, I'm being sincere. You're interpreting me okay. and belittling you. I'm not. So I have been I'm on... impressed. I'm, I'm not listening to you. Okay. I've been on many film, shot, fil film shoots. Yes. And considering, not even considering this is your first time, you seem totally in control. What, as a producer? Of a producer, yeah. totally in control. The director 
of course, was competent, and and so I thought it was extremely. It was a professional set. It was a professional set. We do things set. professionally at GB News. That's the thing. And really well done. Yeah, well, really thank you. well done. Oh, and I'm I thought it was a little. I thought I thought the production values. I thought if I had to do it, I would have saved a little bit of money, and maybe not had cats, maybe not had extras. Well, I think the cats were quite integral to the whole ethos. You know. John was very keen yeah. on the cats. He John, John the has lots of cats. He does have lots of yeah. cats, and yeah. And so he wanted cats there. So, you know, whenever I say something controversial on Facebook, I always post a picture of a cat. It does actually mollify any situation yeah. instantly, doesn't it? It does. If, I'm, if I've been in lots of Twitter arguments, yeah. uh, what I do is I just put a cat video out there. Yeah. And it's like a cleanser. Yeah. And everyone just calms down. And we're and happy, we've because seen cats. You can't retain anger and rage in the face of, of a, a cat. Like, you know, big furry face. You know? Right. You were on the New York comedy scene. Yeah. Then you came to the UK, and for some reason you stayed. For some reason I stayed. I wanted to see my children. Oh, it was because Basically, family Basically, yeah. yeah okay. I mean, I would have gone home if I didn't have any children, because I was... I, they, they liked me initially a little bit, and then they turned on me. What, the children or the Every, audience? Everybody. 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 This is... This is uh, British people think they're the funniest people on Earth, and you're not. You're not funny, as you can tell. He's not funny trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be funny. You are, you're trying to be funny, you can see. Here's, here's, sorry about this, Andrew. That's all right. Is that, is that, I think with Americans, we, Americans like to be loved. Is that right? And English people don't want to be loved. Do you know what, that is true. I noticed that with American comedians. There's a lot yeah. more sense of like me, like me, you know, yeah. like, uh, there's, they're a lot more bubbly, whereas a lot of uh, British comedians are almost uh, standoffish. Yeah, almost well, like I, was thinking, for laughing at I was thinking more of the audience, is that the audience in this country, if you tell the audience, oh my God, I love England, what a great country, your castles, you, yeah. you're great people, you're so much more spiritual, you're so much more... The audiences don't like it. But if you go to America and you say, America, you know, you... Well, look, I've performed in America, not much, just a few times. Yeah. The audiences are very, uh, uh, how would you put it, uh, vocal. Yeah. Very I mean, they cheer at anything, and they laugh at anything. Yeah, because they paid money, they want to enjoy themselves. You so people, it's capitalist, the, that's what it is. It's, it's, you pay, I don't know, that's it's not just, the right word. No, it's it's a, not it's capitalist. A, you pay money, you're going to get your money's worth. I don't think Americans that, are going to get their money's worth. I love that you can psychoanalyze an entire I've nation. I've thought about it, I've been here for 23 years yeah. already. I've had too much of you people. You know, you, you need to be a comedian, you need to be a performer. Something inside you, you know, is screaming out for attention. No. No, I could do lots of things. I've done other things, and I've done other things as well. I sold advertising space, I was an estate agent. Were you? Yeah, I did lots of other things. The Dinosaur Hour, with me, John Cleese, on GB News. Uh, artificial intelligence, it's always seemed to me the great problem in science is that you, if you can't measure something, you think it can't be scientific. Mm. Science is about yes, measuring is. things, Lots right? Is, yeah. And sometimes they invent things like behaviorism, which is all about the business of being able, yeah. right, to measure things yes. and not about anything else of any interest no, at all. Right. But almost everything that goes on in here is very, very hard to measure. Yes, it is. Very right. hard to quantify. And it's, since yeah. human beings robbed of their emotions by an accident, un unable to cope despite the fact they're completely mm. logical still, mm. because they don't have emotions helping them yeah. to make a decision, how does that apply to AI? Don't we, wouldn't, if it's going to really take over, wouldn't we have to give it an emotional range to motivate it, which we have no chance of giving it? Well, again, I would return to that point of finance that we would do something that was like an equivalent. What we have now has been brilliantly described by critics as not intelligence or anything remotely like intelligence. A stochastic parrot right. is the phrase that is used of the kind of chat GPT-4 and these kinds of things that have become very popular. They are essentially a probabilistic guess at what the next thought should yes, be yes, based on its ability to access a vast corpus of data, which depends on there being such a thing as the internet that has this data electronically available All of at that the speed is, of light. Is it, I accept, yeah. and that's and so the way it is. The, the next step, artificial general intelligence, as it's known, would that require sentience, a, a sense of self, consciousness? Would, would the system be aware that it was a system? Of course, at the moment, it 
it parrots that it's aware. Yeah. I cannot answer that question because I am just a large language model, yeah. it says, yeah. when yeah. you ask it something, you yeah. know, yeah. delicate. This is when people are worried about what's called the singularity, when, when it suddenly becomes aware of itself, and whether this would give it an actual emotion in the way that our brains have emotions, or an, an electronic equivalent, that's to say, a sort of need of some kind, a need to do something, a need to um, make itself something that it isn't. Because, in a sense, that's the human, not even an animal thing. I mean, you look at these lovely animals, and what one of the things we love about animals, I think, is that they don't wake up in the morning feeling terrible about yesterday and how they let themselves down. You know, a tree frog spends 100% of its time being a, free, a tree frog. It's a human because spends they're a... living in the present. Yes, they're living and in the present. my daughter's yeah. just acquired a completely blind dog. <gasps> and, a friend with a friend. Yeah, and yeah. it's ecstatically happy I know. It's now. Amazing. And it's, it's wonderful yeah. because it doesn't wake up in the morning thinking, I wish I had a couple of hours. Yeah. Or I wish I was a cat. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, we as humans, we wish to be other things all yeah, the time. We, we, right. we, we are just so dissatisfied with they ourselves. They teach us so much, these things. They do, don't and they? And I think the value of pets is that they bring us into the present. That when yes. we're stroking a cat or playing with a dog, we're totally in the present, yes. which is where happiness lies. It is it's absolutely right. The, I'm thinking of uh, Damasio. Do you remember Damas, Antonio Damasio's oh, yes. book about the guy that's... who'd had his... Uh, who had a perfectly logical brain... That's right. ..but he couldn't make any decisions because his emotional yeah. intelligence had been destroyed. It him... So I'm saying if, it's gonna ta if they're going to take over the world for us, they have to develop an emotional intelligence which will tell them how to do that. A well, no, I mean, no? Th I think that's like saying a car has to develop legs if it's going to be like a cheetah. The point is it won't be ever like a cheetah, but it will go faster. But its, it's style of going forward is not legs. But and similarly, a computer's style of sentience wouldn't need to imitate a human one, just as a car doesn't need to imitate a cheetah or indeed a human. If you, uh. you don't, and, and a robot won't won't be a, a walking android type thing unless we want that for fun. But you know that's not the way it need be. Sometimes you imitate nature, of course, and people love to imitate geckos for sticky yeah, things. Uh, and yeah. All the rest of it in nature, um, uh, obviously, has had millions of years to practice and fail and practice and fail and practice and fail. But the basic rule of computers, am I right, or is this old fashioned? Shit in, shit out. Yes, 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 gigo, garbage in, garbage out was the polite way of putting it. How can they go beyond what we put in them? Well, they, they look elsewhere. That's the, one of the things the internet has done, is that we don't put anything into that. It goes out and looks for it. We tell it to look. Oh, I see. So it's it scans, orders to look. It scans the world not, of data. And not to look for anything in particular. No, exactly, not to look at anything particular. I mean, yeah. at the moment, you have to remember that what you're looking at now is, let, let's say, chat G, GPT-4, which is the sort of publicly available second version of, of, of the uh, open AI uh, bot, as they like to call it. That is like looking at Carl Benz's car in 1895. Jolly impressive. Look at that. It can go 10 miles an hour. It's amazing what it will be next year and the year after, and in 10 years' time. Look at what the motor car became. Look at how it transformed everything about our lives and our cities and our That's country. because the people uh, and, inventing yeah. mo motor and cars a lot of people were who, motivated yes. to make them better. And also, you have to remember, an enormous number of people who loved, loved their horses looked at it and said, it's pathetic. It'll never catch on, it's been said. I mean, I remember when I first had... No, I get all know. that, and, and then uh, there's a human... Uh, if you... If the, Cars are improving. It's because mm. there's some yes, human who wants there is. to That's make true. them better. Yes. So I'm aware of that emotion. I want to do this for some reason. Come from if we can't make a decision, if our emotional if faculties it's, it's are not. It's tasked to make itself better. It's tasked. It's to tasked to make itself better. Um, yeah, even but the it, ones we have now. Things like chess. There's no element of the human mind there no. in chess. So you can always come up with a computer mm. that will beat a man eventually. Yes, and we Because its yes. memory is better. Yes. And it can play all these games and find yes. out what works, what doesn't yes. work. Yes. So you've got that. Yes. But when you're dealing with things where there's an element of the human emotion mm. involved in order yes. to create 
a decision. The point is it's artificial intelligence. We're not making human intelligence in a machine. We are making artificial intelligence. I know, no, but I'm asking, is it limited? Idea. Is it limited in what it in what can achieve because it can't decide to do something because it wants to? Yes, probably limited in that it will... Prob we hope that it will remain something that takes instruction. We hope. So, yeah, yeah, that it won't say, I want to paint a ceiling and it then produces something better than the Sistine Chapel because I have a need to do it. Uh. See? But, <laughs> but, but given the exponential way it will improve, improve itself, write code to improve itself, and continue yeah, to improve that it. I understand. Given that, oh. it's very hard to make a stable and safe So uh, I have one prediction. last question. Yeah. Cricket. Yes, <laughs> back to cricket. There you are. We, what, what was the point of the 100? We've got 20 overs, which is yeah. 120 balls. Yeah. Now somebody says, no, it would be better if we only had <laughs> 100 balls. Do we got to go slowly down until the match has been pared down to about 30 balls mm. for each innings, right? Yeah. And, and then all the rest of the time we can watch rockets going <laughs> off. And... It's money, of course. It is money. It's advertising. It's getting people what's in the, the ground. Difference? So what's the difference between 120 balls and 100? It's, and it, 100? It, 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 it seems not much, but sometimes these things do make a difference. i personally not a huge fan of the 100. Some people I know who are real cricketers and absolute lovers of the game right. think it's a fantastic innovation. I thought it was cricket yeah. for people who didn't like cricket. Well, it's, it's to introduce people who don't like cricket ah, to cricket. And I then see. So maybe it's a marketing It's a gateway ex. drug. It's not a game, it's a mar marketing <laughs> exercise, right? <laughs> kind of, yes. I mean, I'm afraid that's the way things go because, because grounds might otherwise be empty and so the only way you can fill them is to market. The game. Uh -huh. You can't. You can't expect them. I to... love test matches and I love the county championship. Pe should... People of our generation do, but yeah. I think we have to be realistic about getting younger people into it, and and they want to spend an evening having fun in kind of in the way Americans go to a baseball game. And I yes. know it sounds terrible sort to imitate no, no, a, another, limited, another it's American uh, well, institution. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's for people with limited attention span. If you like, <laughs> right. I think that may well be. You're <laughs> sweetie to come. Bless you, dear time. man. I'm sure I've talked nonsense, but it's been enormous fun. Yes, but we're going to he edit you very, very heavily. <laughs> yeah. No, it's great. It really is. It's been fabulous. You could choose to you. any one of those cats oh, you God, like and take would. it oh, with don't you. Tell me that. <laughs> would I would. And now, time for a song. They say that life is fleeting, like some shoddy central heating. First, you're toasty. Then you're mostly in the cold. There are some who say it's ruthless that we end up bald and toothless. But who admits the benefits of getting old? Mother Nature is a pensioner. And though we shouldn't mention her, she carries on as though she's gone berserk. We aspire to this endeavor that will peace will reign forever. But how can it when the planet doesn't work? I can't wait for the apocalypse. The atmospheric, esoteric whistle stop eclipse. There's a cost of living crisis. Pepper Pig is joining ISIS. There's bugger all to live for, so we're ready to die. I can't wait for the apocalypse. What kind of blunt and jubilant atomic clock is this? There is no second coming, just a bog with lousy plumbing. We don't need a horoscope to certify that the end of the world is nigh, 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 nigh. Night is quite alluring, and to me it's reassuring that the bun fight over sunlight is adjourned. Oblivion is jolly, there's no need to bring a brolly, for extinction's a distinction to be yearned. It's quite common for an earthling to expect a fresh rebirthing, re-embark as Joan of Arc or Mao Zedong. 
But if you dream of smart emergings on a cloud of eighty virgins, when you've signed out, you will find out you were wrong. <laughs> I can't wait for the apocalypse, the fine and dandy cotton candy lollipop eclipse. There are demons swinging axes, but at least you would pay taxes. So bring on Armageddon, cos we're ready to fly. I can't wait for the apocalypse, a final pucker from the f with the proper lips. Let the universe be blasted, it was spiffing while it lasted. So let's wave a metaphysical goodbye. Next time on The Dinosaur Hour. It's making the point that not only is cancel culture real, um, but it's, it's so bad we're going to be studying it in 100 years. It is odd when you think about it that there is an ideology which has become a dominant value that nobody is allowed to question. <laughs> we didn't vote it in, mm -hmm. right? I right. mean, I mean, when you think about it, it's like, really, no one's allowed to question this? But you white, right. he heteronormative, <laughs> <laughs> from a colonializing nation. Oh, you I'm an you, you, you go into the, yeah. Exactly, you go into this terrain with, with some severe baggage <laughs> on your side. Are, are you going to be problematic again? <laughs> <laughs> I love that word. <laughs> There's also people who think that the key to saving the world is less and less freedom of speech. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You would think we would have learned a bit from Galileo. <laughs> I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Hello, thank you for being a big part of GB News. We'd like to wish you and your loved ones a Christmas season full of comfort and joy. As well as a peaceful and prosperous new year. From our family. To yours. We are proud to be your channel. Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Here on GB News. The People's Channel. Merry Christmas. I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. GB News, unlike other broadcasters, isn't obsessed with the London Westminster bubble. We think there's a nation beyond the M25, and that's why we talk about the issues that matter across the land. Join me on State of the Nation, 8 to 9 o'clock, Monday to Thursday, on GB News. Daisy's listening, and you should too. Every Sunday from 11, join Michael Portillo. There will be topical discussion, looking at the week before and the week to come. So kick back and relax at 11 a.m. on Sundays on GB News with me, Michael Portillo. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Good afternoon, Britain. Good afternoon, 